Anderson Cooper, AC360, CNN Weeknights, 10 Eastern. One story we've been following closely here on 360 is the arrest and imprisonment of an American hospital volunteer in Haiti on an allegation that he practiced voodoo on a child. His name is Paul Wagner. He's accused of kidnapping a 15-month-old boy who, in fact, was seriously ill and died, and then turning that child into a zombie. That's right, a zombie. An American man who is not yet charged with a crime is being held in Haiti's notorious national penitentiary. Keeping them honest, the allegation, which is under investigation, was made by the child's father, who tells people his son is alive. A hearing was held today before an investigative magistrate, with both Wagner and the father present. A colleague of Wagner's telling CNN the hearing lasted about four hours, but was cut short due to a power outage. No ruling was issued today, but Wagner supporters are hoping the judge may decide tomorrow to release him. Now, here's the background to this story and how it got to this point. Back in February, a month after the earthquake devastated Haiti, Wagner, whose nickname is Little Paul, was volunteering at a hospital when a man walked in with his deathly ill son who did not survive. The father, Franz Philiston, was asked to return the following day to claim the body. American doctor Kenneth Adams was present at the hospital the next day. In an affidavit, Dr. Adams states that when Philiston was shown the remains of his son, quote, the father jokingly said that it looked like the baby was still alive. But I pulled out my stethoscope and listened carefully for any breath sounds or a heartbeat, and there was none. In addition, an official death certificate was filled out for little Kevin Philiston and signed by a hospital official. The boy's body was cremated by the hospital because Franz Philiston said he had no money to bury his son. A colleague said that Wagner's only role that day was being present with Mr. Philiston when he viewed his son's body. Even the head of hospital security said little Paul had nothing to do with the child's care. But just weeks later, Philiston filed complaints against Wagner and two others. They were cleared, but Wagner was not. A summons was issued for his arrest, and he was jailed earlier this month. Last week, he released a letter from the National Penitentiary saying, quote, I am broken and can't understand why this is happening to me. I've done nothing wrong. Why can't anybody help me and get me out of here? I'm scared. I'll never be released. I have been moved and can no longer feel the sun on my skin. It is so dark, and I am so afraid. Tonight, the State Department said that it's been providing consular assistance to Wagner during his detention. Meanwhile, Wagner's colleague is Paul Sebring, who incidentally is nicknamed Big Paul. He's in Port-au-Prince tonight, and a short time ago, I spoke to him via Skype. How concerned are you about Paul's safety? I mean, he's been accused of basically turning a little boy into a zombie through some sort of voodoo. I mean, are you worried that there may be people out there in Haiti who will try and harm him once he is out of prison? I think the biggest concern I've got for his safety once he's out of prison is that, you know, people surrounding this case, um, they may try, you know, they may not be happy with the ruling that's happened. And, you know, they may come after him in some sense. You know, there was... Uh, violence that was surrounding it uh, back in February, and uh, there were two basically lynch mobs that were come after him. Uh, we're just really hoping that uh, that doesn't happen this time. And we have, you know, contacted, you know, some people that we work with here in local police that are on our side to make sure that you know we're safe and secure when he is released before we you know, go and leave the country for a bit. I have to ask, how is his mental and emotional state? I mean, he's been in the National Penitentiary since December 16th, and he wrote a letter just before Christmas where he said that he was afraid, that he was scared, that he'll never be released. So how is he doing? Uh, for the condition that he's in, he's doing, he's doing okay. I mean, personally, he's a very strong individual. Uh, I know he's doing much better than I or anyone I know would do. Uh, mentally, it, you know, it is taking its toll, as it would with anybody. And we just keep, you know, trying to make sure he has food and water and encouraging letters and that he can read to, you know, let him know how much he's loved back home and how everyone knows he's innocent. Are you concerned at all about his health? I mean, the prison where he has been uh, staying reportedly has problems with cholera. Are you afraid at all that Paul could have contracted cholera? I mean, he's separated from the cholera patients. Uh, he was, when I saw him today in court... He did look dehydrated. We are addressing that, getting him some more oral rehydration salts and some more water, things of that nature. Uh, the problem is, is that he has some other cellmates that are not as uh, blessed as he is to have a support crew like us. So he's been giving most of his food and water away to them because they're in worse shape than him. So he actually yesterday requested that we 
quadruple the food and water we're taking in so that he can take care of his cellmates for the time being. Mm -hmm. And how would you say the State Department has been handling this? Do you feel that they've been helpful at all in, in helping secure Paul's release from prison? I don't think they, they have been trying. I don't think they've been helpful, no, in that sense. Um, from the the answer I get from them is that their their process their process here is to ensure that they oversee the make the judicial process to make sure that it's it doesn't get bogged behind, but they can't be influencing any of the uh, judges or anything like that. That's not their role. It's a sovereign country here, so they have to respect the laws there. They just want to make sure that the laws and the ju judicial process is followed all the way through. And from what I understand, the State Department told you that they wouldn't be present at Paul's hearings because of the Christmas holiday, yet you're there. So how did that sit with you? Uh, I was really upset, actually. You know, it was on the 24th. It was Friday. And I asked what time they were going to be there. And the answer I got was, it's a holiday. We're not going to be there. And I said, well, if he gets released and we have issues, what about a security detail? And they said, well, you know, it's, we'll see what we can do. I was extremely disappointed with that because uh, it's just... They're leaving him hanging out to dry is how I feel. And the two of you have been doing humanitarian work in Haiti with this with your group since the earthquake. When this legal ordeal is over, which it does seem like it's getting close to an end, will you actually stay there and continue your work? Is that what he wants to do? Yeah, that's what he does want to do. What I want to do is we do need to take a break uh, from Haiti for a little bit, let things cool off. Um, I will speak to him after he met with the State Department for the first time on Wednesday uh, last week uh, when he was in the prison, and they asked him what his plans were, and he told me that uh, he told him straight up, he's like, I want to go back to the house, uh, settle up some things, take care of some of the pro uh, projects we were working on, leave for a couple weeks and come back. Um, I believe, honestly, that I've never met another person who is more dedicated to working in, in this country and helping out people.